It seems like we're writing about another new electric motorcycle every other week at gizmag.com. This is a rapidly evolving segment, big steps in battery technology being taken all the time. The electric revolution is just getting underway, and your first battery bike is probably not as far off as you might think. Meet the Zero S, an all-electric, street-legal supermoto from California's Zero Motorcycles. Developed as a street legal big brother to the Zero X motocrosser, the S's dirt bike DNA is obvious. For starters, its aircraft grade aluminium frame is feather light, well, if your feather weighs about 8.8 .8 kilos. The forks, geometry, seat and riding position are all pure supermoto. Comfort be damned, this is a bike designed to pack as much fun as possible into a city commute. The whole design centers around the battery, it's absolutely enormous, by far the biggest and heaviest component on the bike. The whole bike weighs just 135 kilos, right in the ballpark for a street supermoto, and the chunky battery box accounts for around a third of that weight. It's more than twice as big as the battery on the Zero X, and it stores more than twice the energy at 4.4 kilowatt hours. The S couldn't be simpler to ride. Turn the key to arm the bike, make sure the kill switch is off, then twist and go. The first few degrees of throttle travel don't do anything, and the power hits with a little bit of a jerk, something like a badly tuned fuel injection system, but that can probably be sorted out. On the road, the Zero bike is excellent fun. It takes off fairly sedately, and we couldn't make it really at all, but it builds speed quickly enough to get you away from the traffic. Lightweight plus supermoto geometry makes it great in the corners, and the smooth electric engine pulls you cleanly and predictably through the curves. It's totally silent when you're stopped, but it's got a kind of whining roar to it when you're on the move. I think it sounds great, but then I've never been one for super loud bikes. The front brakes are another window into the Zero's off-road heritage. They take a big squeeze to get any real stopping power happening, and I reckon they're worth upgrading. Of course, being an electric, maintenance is virtually zero beyond tyres and brakes, and you'll never need to pull into another petrol station. Instead, you just pull out the charging plug from under the left-hand side fairing, and plug it into mains power with a long kettle cord. From totally empty to 100% full takes around two and a half hours. And because it's totally emission free and doesn't use any oil, you can make a pretty good argument to the boss that it's just as clean as a bicycle to bring into the office and charge it while you work. So, down to the two most important questions with electric bikes. How fast does it go? And how far? Well, the Zero S has no problems hitting highway speeds. It hits 100 k's an hour in somewhere around 4 seconds and it feels good doing it. Zero says that it's got another 10 or 15 clicks left in it for overtaking before the limiter kicks in. Put it this way, at street speeds, power doesn't feel like an issue. And the range? Well, that varies hugely. This is not the bike for you if you're planning a lot of freeway miles. Sit it at 100 km an hour and you can almost watch the battery bars draining as you ride. We chewed through half the battery in one very scary 10k freeway joint. On the other hand, you can gas it pretty hard and zoom around at back street speeds for much, much longer. Doing 50 to 60 k's an hour, we had no doubt it would make Zero's claimed 80 to 100k range. It was fascinating to see what a huge impact speed has on energy consumption. I pushed it at one point until the power ran out completely. There was a few k's left in it even once the dash read zero and it was beeping at me non-stop. Unlike some other electrics, the Zero doesn't slow down or lose power at the end of its battery charge. Instead it rides perfectly normally with full power until it comes to a dead stop. So it's really up to you to manage how much power you use if you want to get maximum range out of it. But is the Zero S good value for money? And how good is it really for the environment? given that all that energy has to come from somewhere. Well, we did some calculations on this, and you might find the results pretty surprising. You'll have to go over to the gizmag.com to see our working out, and, uh, well, and of course argue with us there. 
But one thing I can definitely tell you, early adopters are going to have a hell of a lot of fun riding this thing. And they're only going to get better from here.